Welcome to Smith Weekly Discussions, an occasional program for our members of Smith Weekly Research. Please note this program is a private discussion and everything contained herein is for entertainment and educational purposes only. With that, we hope you're in a comfortable position along with your favorite beverage to enjoy the discussion. We remind our audience to examine our show notes attached to each of our shows to better understand how our program functions. Before we get into our discussion today, we want to say thanks for questions coming from our audience of Smith Weekly, including Jackie A., Sean M., and Gabe F. On the program today is a returning guest, Mr. Nico Kakaus has joined us. Nico is the president and CEO of Argentina Lithium and Energy, an Argentina-focused lithium junior with a number of exploration and development projects within the Salta and Catamarca provinces, northern Argentina. The company is listed on the Toronto Venture Exchange under the symbol LIT, as well as on the OTC markets under the symbol PNXLF. Nico, welcome to the program. Thanks for coming back. Oh, Andrew, it's always a pleasure to be here. Likewise, Nico, it's always good to chat and thought I'd have you come back on here and just talk about company updates here at Argentina Lithium and Energy. But why don't we get right to it? Uh, the company just had recent news that it had brought on a strategic partner. Tell us about that. Yes, we've had some fairly uh, big news. And, uh, you know, this sitting that I'm here with you is very timely because we just announced the closing of our transaction, whereby Stellantis, one of the world's largest automotive companies, and for those who don't know, it's formerly, you know, Chrysler and includes uh, Alfa Romeo, uh, Citroën, and Jeep, and Fiat, and Maseratis, and Peugeot, just a massive automotive producer, in, has uh, invested. $90 million uh, into our company for a 19.9% interest in our subsidiary. We also granted them an exchange right so they could swap that out for 19.9% of our public company uh, at a future date. Why don't we talk just briefly some of the terms in there, talk about capital structure pro forma, the transaction in a moment, but talk just a little bit about some of the other components in terms of offtake as you guys uh, develop out the projects here. Well, that's right. I mean, Stellantis put the substantial sum into our company. It really is focused on to be used as funding uh, our exploration efforts on all of our lithium projects in Argentina for the course of the next three years. The, the purpose is to be able to advance our projects so that they all reach uh, a pre-feasibility study stage. And uh, what uh, we have done in return is we've granted Stellantis uh, a right to buy up to 15,000 tons of lithium carbonate equivalent when we get it up into production, you know, for over a period of seven years. The initial focus, Nico, I suspect will be obviously exploration efforts, but then also probably getting a little more geared towards uh, advancement development efforts in terms of probably Rincon West. Is that the initial focus or maybe correct me there as far as what you guys plan to kind of go after here? Yes. I mean, our our focus right now, we've been drilling on, we've got four projects and uh, Rincon West is the one project that we've started uh, working on initially because we've had permits so that, that was already permitted with one drill rig working on there. And it takes about a month to drill uh, one hole in these lithium uh, salt lakes here. But now that we've got this substantial sum of uh, funding, we plan to double up or perhaps even triple up uh, the number of drill rigs that we have ongoing. And the purpose is to see how quickly we could expedite all our exploration efforts with the goal of reaching pre-feasibility study stage. Um, with our four projects, we're really initially focused on two, one being the Rincon West, which is one that, we, like I just said, we've been drilling out that uh, project is ad uh, is exactly adjacent to Rio Tinto's uh, Brincon project there, where they have a large resource and they're moving into production. And the other project is the Antofaya North project, which is just south of Rincon West. And in that project, again, we have uh, Albermal, the world's second largest lithium producer. They've got a large holding there as well. And our, what they stated to have is Argentina's largest lithium resource there. And we're just to the north of that, you know, on the same Solar, and as soon as permitting comes in, we plan to very aggressively engage on, uh, you know, geophysics and uh, drill program there. It's a great place to be working, definitely, in the sense that you guys have majors right amongst you. And, and for good reason, uh, Andrew, because this is all within the lithium triangle. 
more than half of the world's lithium reserves are situated in this part of the world. On top of that, really attractive is that when lithium occurs in brines, it's also very cost effective to be able to extract that. And especially now with the introduction of new direct lithium extraction technologies that are improving uh, almost by the hour, it makes it amenable to some uh, potentially very low operation costs. So, and on top of that, you've got Argen in Argentina, an underexplored country that uh, has been on the mining scene only for the last 30 years or so. So there's a lot of uh, discoveries yet to be made and uh, especially so in the lithium space. Argentina could definitely use some of these economic growth mechanisms like a healthy and robust mining sector and lithium is definitely uh, something that's really becoming an important sector there, Nico, as we continue to develop this out. Yes. How about a update just on the capital structure here, Nico? Maybe just give us a little bit of a flavor here, forward looking a bit, but pro forma on this transaction in terms of, let's just to make the assumption that Stellantis does in the future convert their local operating entity ownership into equity. Mm -hmm. But, you know, obviously we know that there's going to be future finances. We know that more money is going to be needed to be put in these projects and there'll be top up and some dilution, et cetera, for their position. But just give the audience how you see the capital structure shaping up post this transaction give them a flavor for how that would look if they did convert. What you also see just being the runway given cash, you know, how far that gets you down the road. Yeah, no, I'd be happy to talk about that. Right now, we our public company has 130 million shares uh, issued and outstanding. And uh, with our you know stock trading between 50 and 60 cents right now, that gives us a market cap of about 60, around, 50, around 60 to $70 million Canadian. If the lenders were to convert their the subsidiary holding to the public company right now, that would entail adding an additional 53 million shares to the issued and outstanding. I, I hardly see that as dilutive because their addition of 53 million shares, you know, allowed us to acquire 90 million dollars. Uh, so it's uh, at a substantial premium uh, to where our shares were trading, especially before we announced this transaction. But Going forward, though, you are correct there, you know, we have warrants that are outstanding and some options, um, they will continue to be issued and uh, to contribute to the shares outstanding. And presumably, when we get to the point where we need to make a production decision, there'll be a large capital outlay, which will probably entail some combination of equity and debt. But Nonetheless, there probably will be more equity issued, but Stellantis has a right to be able to acquire to top up so that they can maintain a 19.9%, but they would be, in effect be contributing funds for, for that top up, right? So whatever we issued those shares at in the future, whether it's a dollar, two or five dollars, that's the price that Stellantis would be paying as well. So these would be additional additional funds coming to us anyways. And just talk a little bit, just, you know, with you guys, you know, where you stand today, current burn, the ramp up of exploration work, which obviously will come with a accelerated cost. Obviously, there's results too, Nico, which we need factor into the equation here too, that there should be some good results that come along here, just with the nature of how these deposits work um, and where you guys are in terms of location. Just talk briefly about, you know, how far you think this gets us down the road and as far as money. And obviously there's a lot of variables, but if you had a terrible junior market, if you will, like we've seen in other sectors and lithium in part, how far could you carry this down the road if you had to? This will fund us for the next three years. I, I, you know, the, the, fun, the, the projections that internally we have uh, are running around between 10 to $15 million a year. And if we double up, it will probably be a, a little more expensive. So we'll have enough funds for the next three or four years to be able to operate and to complete our geophysical studies, to complete um, our drilling work, drilling out wells and uh, pre-feasibility engineering studies. But at least we have the comfort, though, you know, from the results that we've been drilling on our first project here, the Rincon West, we've published the first nine holes that we started, began drilling uh, about a year and a half ago. And all of these holes came back with uh, lithium values. In fact, the, the grades and intercepts are very comparable to those grades and intercepts that have been published by our neighbors uh, like Rio Tinto or Argosy Minerals over on the eastern side of the, uh, the Salar. So I think we're very pleased with what we're getting and we're, we're en route. We're looking to potentially publish our first uh, resource uh, calculation maybe by the end of this year, first quarter of 2024. So these are very exciting times for us and uh, for our shareholders right now too. 
while we're on that topic, so, you know, Rincon West will obviously be the main focus. You guys will expend as well on Antifia, but what is your take on what you guys would like to see in terms of a project that has the scale to attract a mid-tier or a major? Obviously, you've got them next door and also about potential CapEx and maybe what a comparable would cost and mm -hmm. just give the audience an economic flavor and kind of what you guys see as sufficient. Happy to, you know, our, we have four projects. Two of the projects are priority projects, as we call them. One of them, of course, is the Rincon West, and the other one is the Antifaya project. And the reason we call them priority projects is because they are situated, A, in Solars or, you know, Salt Lakes that already have discoveries on them. And number two, uh, that both of these projects in these discoveries have major uh, world-class companies that are operating there. In the case of Rincon, we've got Rio Tinto as a neighbor that bought their way in there just over a year ago for $825 million. And in Antofaya, there is uh, Albemarle, the world's second largest lithium producer, and with a, again, with a very large resource. It's interesting, we were able to acquire these during, uh, actually during the lockdown times of pandemic when the competition was actually uh, not hardly any competition there. So we were able to be selective and to acquire these projects at uh, very uh, reasonable prices. And uh, I think that bet has paid off very well so far for us. In terms of the work that we started, we started drilling out these two, our focus is to get these two tar these two projects drilled out first. The other two projects, Positos and Inkawasi, um, have potential for uh, lower grade uh, lithium values in the range of 100 to 150 milligrams per liter lithium. But the size of these projects that we've got are really quite large or 25,000 hectares or more in in the case of Rincon is just, just under 4,000 in case of Antofaya just about 10,000 so we feel that by leaving the lower grade ones for a later time all these mid-grade or high-grade uh, lithium projects will all get taken up over the next little while and there'll be a demand for lower grade ones especially as direct lithium uh, extraction technology comes on stream as a more mainstream type of extraction method and will make it uh, amenable to be able to to mine out even rel very low grade uh, lithium deposits. Our goal here is to drill out, continue drilling out our Rincon and come to a resource within the first quarter. And then when permitting comes in, we expect to have uh, two or three drill rigs on our Antifaya project and get that one uh, drilled out. And then come again, do a resource calculation and then conduct a pre-feasibility study within all, trying to do this all within the next uh, two and a half to three years. Great, appreciate the uh, thinking on that, how you guys plan to approach here. Just talk about the broader lithium market health here, just in terms of, you know, supply issues out there that you're seeing, but also if the demand side remains to be robust, if it's starting to get satisfied in terms of contracted lithium supply agreements, just talk about the overall view there and how you see this going forward and get the audience up to speed on maybe some yeah. of the details on the supply demand issues that they need to carry into their consideration as investors. Just this deal that we announced that we're talking about, I think should very amply demonstrate the, the demand that's there for especially automotive companies to have access to lithium. I've read recently an article where the CEO of Stellantis said that planet Earth simply doesn't have enough lithium to build enough electric vehicles to replace every combustion engine vehicle out there. So. To me, that demonstrates, you know, that there's an urgency uh, with existing automotive companies to ensure that they have a supply, an adequate supply of lithium at the, you know, right concentration. And uh, because as the world now continues to switch over into electric vehicles, you know, we've seen it in the past, uh, you know, post global pandemic that, that we just went through that one small thing could be missing and then all these supply chains, you know, all these factories begin to shut down, creating shortages. So I think there's a lot of planning going into place here. And in cases like in ours, we're seeing companies like Stellantis going upstream here to reaching up to exploration companies. And basically they're purchasing an optionality to ensure that if lithium does come on stream here, that they get first dibs on it. I think a lot of the lithium supply globally today is concentrated in China from a 
geopolitical point of view, that is problematic for countries in North America and in Europe. And I think uh, a lot of uh, strong efforts are being made to ensure that they have the supply where they need it. So I'm seeing uh, almost on a daily basis, uh, automotive companies and battery companies making deals with uh, explorers all around the globe in different locales. And I think that's to, to maintain the diversification. And then when you focus here in uh, within the lithium triangle in Argentina, it's expected some of the biggest and um, the most number of discoveries for lithium are going to come from, I think, very well located strategically to be able to capitalize on that. Nico, just your thoughts on just real quick as you talk there, the question of battery technology. And of course, we know that existing industry is set up and geared towards lithium as a principal uh, component in battery technologies. And that's not going to change overnight. That's going to take a lot of time because obviously the industry is tooled that way. But just talk about, you know, what your thoughts are on battery technology improvement. Do you think lithium plays a big role for long term or do you see that other technologies will also start kind of a fire of other exploration activities in terms of other minerals, you know, whether it's nickel, whether it's cobalt, whether it's vanadium, what have you. Is there a substitute? But how much moat does lithium have with battery yeah. technology? Well, is there a substitute? Eventually, a substitute can be had. I mean, that's economics 101, that when the price of one commodity or, or one type of technology becomes prohibitively high, then yes, the market does search for uh, for substitutes and the market is very innovative and uh, usually does come up with uh, excellent substitutes. But right now, there's no substitutes on the market. And I think the, the mainstream technology definitely for batteries is, is lithium. A lot of it has to do with its lightweight. You know, you see where it's located in the periodic table and uh, that'll tell you there's not many other minerals that are more lightweight <laughs> than that, uh, unless you're dealing with, uh, with, with uh, helium or hydrogen. Um, so lithium, I think, is extremely well placed to, to be the mainstream mineral used to gen create batteries for the foreseeable future. What happens beyond that continue to remain so, I, I, I you know, which very well may, or if uh, there are other uh, discoveries or processes that can create uh, better ways to store electricity in the future, that may so come in. But right now, I, I don't see anything else uh, displacing lithium. I appreciate that opinion and good point on the periodic table. Very much overlooked, I think, uh, pretty much at this point. Governments, educational institutions, what have you, everybody should have a periodic table and it should simply say this. You want the <laughs> world to operate properly? Here's everything you need. Yeah, exactly. Appreciate oh, that was that. my chemistry background coming out. <laughs> Too much overlooked. Uh, need to get back to basics. A periodic table is incredibly important for people to understand. All the modern things we get to enjoy come out of the ground. How about just overall strategy, Nico, for the company now that this is uh, closed uh, now? Very quick, by the way. Great job on the transaction and uh, congratulations to you and the team on working on this. I'm sure it took a lot of sweat and tears to get through here. Just going forward here, you know, you talked about pre-feasibility study staged and obviously take it beyond that as well. But talk just briefly about what you guys would prefer to do. And, you know, obviously there's two routes here as a junior, and that is to move on to development and get into production, cash flow. Or do you see things, given where you guys are in the location, do you see that things would really most likely turn out to be a sell-off to maybe a, a major or a mid-tier? Well, now that we've got the money in and this transaction close and it's been a long it's been over a year in the works uh, to put, pull this transaction together it's been a lot of work but i think the real hard work begins now well you know the wood chopping starts now so to speak and then you know we've got our exploration programs we're right now putting you know adjusting our strategy to expedite all the work and uh, see if we can work faster our objective is not to, to get sold out at this point we've got a good partner uh that can see us through uh, whatever funding that we'll need forward, they're going to be there for us, and we're confident of that. Ultimately, they want to see us be successful and produce lithium, and that that's the product that they're after. They're not after being just a shareholder. They're after acquiring the lithium that they would need for uh, building their electric vehicles. So going into production, what would something like that cost? You know, I, I've seen other other operations in, in that part of the world that have gone into production. They can range anywhere from 300 to 500 million dollars and but these are all you know for the future in terms of how we're going to do that 
Yeah, I appreciate that. That's good information there. And it's always good to talk that strategy and the production strategy you write there after that. As you know, we're in the junior sector and there's always a for sale sign up as long as the price is proper. We'll always consider, you know, what's best for shareholders. Of course, everything is for sale, <laughs> I've found in life, but it, it, it all depends on the price. Right now, I think our, we're in the headspace of pushing forward and heading towards production, keeping a long-term view on where we want to be. And if a suitor comes along and pays the right premium and uh, makes sense for us, our company and our shareholders, of course, it's our duty to consider it and uh, to evaluate it. Indeed. Anything else just on the government side, obviously Grosso Group, long-term status in the country in Argentina, operatorship, a long track record there as well. Anything on community ESG front that you want to mention? Just any other final thoughts before we wrap up? Yeah. Oh, absolutely. Well, you know, you're right. As a Argentina Lithium is a member of the Grosso Group. We as a Grosso Group have been actively uh, working in Argentina now for 30 years since it opened, the country opened up its investment laws to, to allow foreign investment in the mining sector. And we're considered one of the pioneers. In fact, Joe Grosso, the founder of Grosso Group, has been inducted in Argentina's Mining Hall of Fame. So we're well known in that country. We have an exemplary reputation uh, of making discoveries, of doing business honestly and fairly. And quite frankly, that was one of the first attributes that hinted to Stellantis that we're the right group to begin discussions with. And that's what started all of this. It was our reputation in that country. So I'm very proud of that. Our relationship with the government officials is excellent. The fact that Stellantis is with us just bolsters up every anymore. I don't know that it improves that anymore. I don't think it can be improved anymore. Uh, so we have a really good relationship there. And we ensure that you know, we employ people locally. We pay fair wages to everybody there. We're one of the major employers in, up there in, in, in the northern part of uh, Argentina. The whole industry, in fact, is. You know, we have also undertaken a commitment uh, with Stellantis that we will try and minimize and set targets for impact on uh, on water uh, use and to become carbon as carbon neutral as possible to keep our carbon footprint down. It's part of the need and it's, you know, going forward. So we're, we're implementing a lot of new things here and we hope to be that cutting edge carbon free lithium producer sometime in the near future. Well, Nico, let's leave it there. I appreciate the time here. Thank you for the update. And to finish up, for potential investors who are listening in, Argentina Lithium and Energy has a market capitalization of about 52 million Canadian dollars here. Why should investors consider the company now? When you consider a company, you look at the management team first and foremost before even the projects. Then you look at the potential and the projects. And I think uh, both of these uh, elements have been validated now by a major international company like Stellantis who have put a substantial number of sum of money into us. We're not looking at doing any funding for any time soon. We're going to be getting to work, producing results and creating really organic shareholder uh, value here. I think this is a company that, that stands out from all our other peers in, uh, in Argentina. And uh, I think we're well underway to be very successful in, that, in this lithium space. Very well. Certainly, this is one of the earlier stage companies to look at, and this transaction definitely backstops a, a very good piece of runway here. So appreciate that. And best way for folks to contact the company, Nico? Oh, best way is uh, by email, of course. You can get the email address and the website at uh, argentinalithium.com. All our contact information is on there. Reach out myself, Sean Perger, our investor relations person. We're always happy to talk to anybody that's interested in our company. Nico, thanks for taking the time and best of luck here on upcoming exploration and progress at the company. Much appreciated. Thank you.